So 164A says, it gives you the procedure for the medical practitioner, how he has to conduct the medical examination, where during the stage where an offence of committing rape or attempt is under investigation, it is proposed to get the person of the woman with whom rape is alleged or attempt to have been alleged, examined by a medical expert. Such examination shall be conducted by a registered medical practitioner employed in a hospital run by the government or local authority and in the absence of such practitioner, any other medical practitioner with the consent of the person or a person competent to give the consent on their behalf. Such woman shall be sent to the registered medical practitioner within 24 hours from the time of receiving the information relating to commencement of the commission of such offence. So, one item that is to be important to be noted is, one, you should be a registered medical practitioner. Second, better it is in a hospital. Third, is that uh, within 24 hours after uh, the incident, she has to be sent to the registered medical practitioner. Fourth, she should not be allowed to take any bath or, or clean herself up before going to the doctor. These are three things that we have to keep in mind. Now, registered medical practitioner to whom such woman is sent shall, without delay, examine her and prepare a report. This uh, details of the report are given as per Supreme Court guidelines. So, the entire details of the report and then whatever examination is done has to be video recorded. That is another requirement. And then the police should not be there nearby. That is another requirement. These are things that you should do very meticulously know. One, the name and address of the woman and the person by whom she was brought. Age of the woman. Description of the material taken from the person of the woman for DNA profiling. Marks of injury on the person of the woman. That is very, very important. Most of the most often the marks of injury are not mentioned by the doctor, either by oversight or because his uh, concentration is only on uh, treatment and uh, things counselling. So, he is not bothered about the requirements of the forensic lab. So, because of that marks of injury and the police requirements, he always gives a go by. So, you have to be very uh, particular to tell him that marks of injury he has to comment on and the general mental condition of the woman, that is another thing that is very important general mental condition of the woman because without consent no such examination can be done and consent can be given only by a person who is uh, fit in a mental condition to give a consent. So that uh, general medical mental condition of the woman has to be mentioned by the doctor that I have uh, uh, spoken to her she is in a fit condition to give consent. And other material particulars in a reasonable detail uh, that is the format is there and the entire format has to fill up without uh, leaving any gap. The report shall state precisely the reasons for each conclusion arrived at. Finally, if he arrives at a conclusion, either positive or negative, he has to give detailed reasons. The report shall specifically record that the consent of the woman of the person competent to give consent has been obtained. Consent is very, very important and consent has to be specifically mentioned. An exact time of commencement and completion of the examination along with the people or the doctors who are involved along with their signatures also has to be very meticulously maintained because tomorrow in court they will be asked to come and give uh, proof of the contents of the report. Registered medical practitioner shall without delay forward the report to the investigating officer who shall forward it to the magistrate under section 173 as a part of the documents referred in class 5a of that section 173. Nothing in this section shall be construed as rendering lawful any examination without the consent of the woman or any other person competent to give consent on their behalf. So, remember that is the very, very crucial word. Supreme Court has again and again mentioned and consent is very important. Without consent, any examination done is not is a valid, not valid in the eyes of law. So, the report even if it is given will not be taken on record by the court. <coughs> Next are sections regarding 165 and 166 of the search. Section 165, 166 of the Code, CRPC, they give provisions for search by the police officer. 165 authorizes the police officer to make a search without warrant. 165 says, I am reading it out, whenever an officer in charge of a police station or a police officer making an investigation has reasonable grounds for believing that anything necessary for the purpose of an investigation into any offence for which he is authorized to investigate may be found in any place within the limits of the police station of which he is in charge or to which he is attached and that such thing cannot in his opinion be otherwise obtained 
without undue delay such officer may after recording and writing the grounds in his behalf specify in such writing so far as possible the thing for which the search is to be made search and cause the search to be made for such thing in any place within the limits of such station what does it mean it means number 1 number 1 the place the offence should be cognizable offence cognizable offence means the police is authorized to take further steps without magistrate's order that is the importance of a cognizable offence so it should be cognizable offence second the place where he wants he should he, he should require to get one particular evidence number 1 should be searching for an evidence number 2 he should know where to look for it number 4 and he should know that address and place where he is looking is going to look for and that place or address should be within the limits of the police station of which he is in charge or to which he is attached and such a police station and he should write down before going for search he has to write down in police diary in the case diary that all the details that the place reason uh, investigation case details and why and what for he is going to that particular place to search for what and then if he finds it and then seizes anything is to come back and complete the thing that i have seized so and so so and so so that that is the requirement under this section police officer proceeding under subsection 1 shall if practicable conduct the search in person so he should supervise or he can go with a team and entire team can search and he will be the head of the team if he is unable to conduct the search in person there is no other person competent to make the search present he may after recording the reasons send require a subordinate officer to go and search okay the provision of this code as to search warrant and general provisions in one section 100 may apply to a search made under this section uh, such warrant requirements under section 100 will apply mutatism or trendis to this also copies of any record made under sub section 3 clause 1 ought to be sent to the nearest magistrate now <coughs> what does exactly this search this section do <coughs> this section authorizes a police officer to make a search without warrant that is the essence essence is this section section number 160 5 and 166 okay 165 and 166 authorize the police officer to conduct a search without warrant but it prescribes certain pre conditions which must be fulfilled what are the pre conditions one search may be necessary for investigation he has to certify that it is necessary for investigation second the offense is that that it is a cognizable offense he can authorize is authorized to investigate without a magistrate's order third reasonable grounds must exist that the thing that is required for him is available in a particular place fourth there should be un- not be any undue delay in getting the thing in any other way if whatever he does it is unable to get any other thing then grounds of belief he has to write down regarding necessity of the search must be recorded in the case diary if the grounds are not recorded the search will become illegal <coughs> there is always a pressure on the police that whatever he does is not declared by the magistrate illegal at a later stage so he has to follow the procedure in case he doesn't want his actions to be declared illegal at a later date by which time he will have no chance to correct his position police officer has no power to make a search under this section beyond the local limits of his own jurisdiction but any place it is there outside his jurisdiction then he has to go to the other police station take the other man uh, person who is sh of that police station along with him and take then in a, any place includes house of the accused that is specified in paresh chandra versus jogendra an illegal search may be resisted if a illegal search is made by the police outside jurisdiction of the police station then the person even if it is accused he is has got all rights to resist private defense right of private defense search will be illegal when it is in contravention of section 100 and 165 this is mentioned in case of radha kishan versus state of up but even if the search is illegal it does not justify any obstruction or other criminal act against the person conducting you may help it
yeah so in the case of uh, shamlal versus state of mp said provisions requiring submission of a record to the nearest magistrate or additional safeguard to protect individuals against general and roaming search remember police do not have the authority to conduct a general or a roving search under this provisions of 165 they have to be specific they should identify the place they should identify the thing that they are searching for and they should search only for that and that too within their jurisdiction that too for a cognizable offense so this is given very clearly in case of gopi kishan versus assistant collector customs police have a tendency to go beyond this brief and conduct a roving search and they'll say something in the record and then go and search for something else so if such thing is done then it will be within the right of the accused to tomorrow go to the court and say and ask the court to declare this particular search and the item that have been seized to be illegal if the search is illegal then the item that has been uh, recovered even if it is very much useful for the uh, investigation and the case will also become illegal and the uh, accused will go scot free so that is the legal position next in the case of nk das versus state of west bengal the seizure memo prepared by police officer should mention bronze chudi or brass bangle it has to be very clearly mentioned okay none of the prosecution witnesses supported the seizure of chudis police inspector gave explanation that he committed a mistake in describing the article it was held that the accused could not be convicted on the sole testimony of a police officer as he made a significant error in a material part of description of the articles seized by him no reliance could be placed on the word and then search and seizure always declared illegal and thrown out of the window so the difference was between you see bronze chudi and brass bangle we normally use these two things very colloquially and to mean the same thing but that particular difference has actually helped the accused to get off in state versus nmt jai immaculate incriminating articles were recovered in pursuance of a confession made by a person in police custody it was held that the evidentiary value of recovery of such incriminating incriminating articles cannot be excluded merely on the ground it was obtained under legal order of remand to police custody the effect of confession and recovery therefore should be strictly examined in accordance with the provisions of evidence act a police officer has no power to make a search under 165 beyond local limits of his jurisdiction however 166 authorizes the officer in charge of police station to have that search made within the limits of another station through the sho of that particular station he can only make him his agent he can authorize the other person to do the his bidding so then it will become law legal next is important item that you have to see is 167 where it says remand or procedure when investigation cannot be completed in 24 hours you should see there are a few time limits that are very very crucial one if you arrest somebody within 24 hours you have to present him before a magistrate nearest magistrate within your jurisdiction or outside the jurisdiction and wherever it is that's one time limit second is in all normal cases investigation should be completed within 24 hours that is the expectation of the law if it doesn't happen so then you have to go to the magistrate and take his permission for police custody and police custody cannot be given for more than 15 days and that too in bits and pieces he may give for 2 days 3 days depending on the requirement and the progress of the investigation and the entire progress investigation beyond if it goes beyond 15 days and he cannot get a police custody he will have to go for a judicial custody only now even within the judicial custody also any uh, crime which is punishable with life and death you will get 90 days to complete the investigation and to submit a final report police report but if it is anything less than that punishment any crime punishable less than that then you will get only 60 days so remember these three four time limits 90 days 60 days 15 days and 1 24 hours there is the four five numbers 
which you have to remember very clearly and the purpose for which they have given. Now, remand or procedure of investigation cannot be completed in 24 hours. The provision is in section 167. The provision relating to remand or procedure when investigation cannot be completed in 24 hours are given in section 167. Okay, now, what does it say? Under 167, if investigation is not completed within 24 hours, you have to go and make a request before the nearest judicial magistrate to extend your period. So, what the magistrate will do, we can extend it up to 60 days <coughs> in case of offence below death and life, 90 days in case of offence of death and life and 15 days only for police custody and beyond that it is only judicial custody. So, if now what is the sequence the importance of 60 days and 90 days? Remember, if your investigation is not completed within 60 or 90 days as the case may be, the accused will get a right of bail. He can get a bail as a matter of right even if it is non-bailable offence. So, you have to remember that. So, that is the, that is the power he gets over the police. No. The other thing that, to, that is not normally uh, given in any act is, what is that mentioned, what is the role of case diary in case of a police station, what the investigation officer does. That is not available anywhere. So, let us see that what do you have. Case diary, it is given, details are given under section 172. A diary of proceedings in investigation, it is called diary of proceedings in investigation, section 172. Okay, it says every police officer making an investigation under this chapter shall day by day, that is chronologically, remember, enter his proceedings in the investigation in a diary, setting forth the time at which the information reached him, time at which he began and closed his investigation, place or places visited by him, statement of the circumstances ascertained through his investigation. So, what are the things important? One is day by day, chronologically. Second, time is very important, at what time, what particular information, what particular action, what particular search, what particular seizure, what particular, uh, you know, uh, investigation, line of investigation, everything has to be entered in a chronological order. It will be checked by the court many times. A statement of witnesses recording during the course of investigation under 161 shall be inserted in the case diary, okay, again chronologically, again time wise, time is again checked. The diary for two shall be a volume and duly paginated. Should be a volume, bound volume should be there. Not loose sheets. And it should have page numbers. So that is how they try to, court tries to get control over the activities, uh, legal or illegal done by the police officers. Any criminal court may send for the police diary of the case under inquiry.